Hi, I'm Ray, and we're going to talk about the new RM mixers from Personas. So we took the Studio Live mixers that and the new platform we built for the whole new AI series mixers, and we took the 32 channel, 3242, and we squished it down into a rack box. So these rack mixers that you see are an entire 32 channel, 16 augs, three main mix bus mixer inside of this rack. So the hardware, we have two different models. We have the RM32 and the RM16. The primary difference between the two is the number of physical inputs and outputs on the hardware itself. Both units have the full 32 channel 25 bus mixer under the hood. So this means with the 16 channel, while you have 16 preamps built into the box, you have an additional 16 sources you can bring in either firewire or via the network. So just like our AI series mixers, they have the option cards on the back. And they'll ship with two FireWire 800 ports, an Ethernet control port, and your SPDIF output. Now in the future, we'll also have Dante option cards as well as AVB option cards. So you can get them on the network. Both of the units feature our XMAX preamps, but we've tweaked them and now they are completely recallable preamps. So they're the exact same XMAX preamps that we had but now they're completely recallable. We also have uh, 16 mix outputs. So these are set up as AUGS mixes. And on the back of the units, you have a mirror of your AUGS mixes on D subs. So this is really cool. If you have these racked up and you're doing a wireless uh, inner system, you can come right out of the D subs in the back and you don't have a mess of cables coming from the front around into the back of your rack. So, the RM32 has 32 XMAX recallable preamps, 16 line outputs, and then your main outputs. Uh, main outputs on this, we added a mono mix bus. So unlike the current Studio Live AI mixers, where your mono is a sum of your left and right, on the RM series mixers, it's a whole separate bus. And you can choose whether you want to operate it as a mono bus or as a center bus, giving you true LCR panning. So the 16, the RM16, has 16 of the recallable XMAX preamps and eight of the mix outputs. Now it still has the full 16 AUGS outputs on it, just the additional eight that you have will be coming from the option card, either FireWire or on the network via Dante or AVB. There's no fan, so it makes it great for studio use. You can put this in the tracking room, run Dante into your control room, or AVB into your control room. Or if you're just running FireWire, it's an awesome audio interface. So a quick overview of the front panel. In addition to all of our connectors, all locking XLR jacks, we have a little meter bridge. And so this is going to show you your input meters. It gives you a three uh, uh, color um, LED that is going to show you your signal present for each of your inputs. It'll turn red if you're clipping on any of your inputs. And then we have a meter, a 48 volt meters button. If you push this button, it'll change the meter mode to show, to light up all any inputs in yellow that have 48 volt phantom applied to it. So this makes it nice if you're plugging and unplugging microphones, you can quickly see what does and doesn't have phantom power applied. So you don't make a mistake and accidentally plug something in and, and potentially damage any of your microphones or gear. On that same kind of uh, path of keeping things safe and protected, we've got a mute all button on the front. Hit that mute all button, it's gonna mute all of your inputs and your outputs on the mixer. So that way, again, if you're pl plugging and unplugging uh, gear, you can mute everything up so you don't accidentally pop some speakers if you've got an amp turned on somewhere. Also in an emergency situation, something's going wrong, you don't know what to do, hit that mute all, it'll shut everything off. That way you don't damage any of your speakers, you don't get the crowd getting their ears blown off in any type of emergency situation. So then just next to that, we have a headphone output. Your headphone output has two source buttons. It has a Q source and a main mix source. So your main source is going to be sourcing from the main mix. Your Q source by default is coming from your solo bus, but you can assign that in the software to be any of the mix buses. You have a tape input on RCA jacks, and then you have your main outputs, your mono or center output, and your left right output with trim pots. So those are, that's the hardware. Pretty basic, pretty straightforward. Now what really makes these systems cool is the software. 
So it might be painfully obvious, but there's no way to control this mixer on the hardware other than a mute all button and some metering, right? So you've got to control it somehow. So what we did is we took our current uh, software for controlling our Studio Live mixers, our VSL and SL Remote, and we completely overhauled the software. So one of the things that you've got to do when you're doing software control, when there is no control surface, is you've got to now rely on that software as your only interaction to control your mix. And in a live environment, that's critical. So while our software worked great the way it was as a companion to a physical control surface, we had to rethink the way we were doing things. Because you no longer have a control surface that's providing you metering for all your channels, providing you faders for control. And so we needed to access everything quickly. We wanted it to be battle ready, and we wanted you to be able to access everything in, in a critical live mix environment in no more than two touches. So we completely overhauled the software. So what I'm going to show you is the new UC Surface software. And what's great about this is that it is platform agnostic. So it's the exact same software, whether you're running it on Mac, Windows, or on iPad. So it, you have full functionality of every function on the mixer on every single platform. And what makes it even more cool is it's fully Windows 8 multi-touch compatible. So this means you now have a multi-touch control surface for mixing your shows live. So on the screen, what we've got is an overview of everything that's going on on the mixer. So we have a channel overview area that shows you all of your channels. And you'll see we do something here that you can't do with moving faders on a physical control surface. We've got a meter, a nice big meter, running right underneath the fader, so you can always see what's going on. And there's no motors to break. So we've got this channel strip view where you can see all of your channels. I've got 32 channels on this mixer. We also have a meter bridge view on the bottom, so I can see every single input on the entire mixer at once, no matter where I'm at in the mix. And I can also use that as a window to see where in my mix I'm currently looking in my channel overview. Across the top is our fat channel area. We have the exact same fat channel as the Studio Live AI mixers. We have your gate, compressor, EQ. You have your A and B, so you can switch between your A fat channel and your B fat channel. We also have an input section. We also we do, we do this thing where we, now that we're all software based, we don't need to stick to the old analog paradigms of something like knobs. So we take advantage of the fact that we're running on software to provide you a, a richer experience and more information right on top. So everywhere you see a parameter in your fat channel, you'll have a name of the parameter, a meter showing you where the parameter is set, as well as the numeric value of that parameter. All you do is touch the parameter. It pops up a, a view so I can adjust the parameter. And when I let go, it pops right back. And so I've got my preamp over here. I can adjust my preamp gain. I've got 48 volt phantom power. I've got polarity all built right into the mixer. Over here on this side, we've got what we call the mix selection area. So in the mix selection area, this is where I can grab whatever mix it is that I want to be working with. So right now I'm on my main mix. I can jump to an aux mix. And you'll see that my faders change to show me the aux mix that I'm on. So right now I'm mixing aux 6. Now I'm back to my main mix. And any mix that I'm on, we have this area here we call the flex fader. So if I'm on aux 1, this is my aux 1 mix. If I'm on aux 9, this is my aux 9. Also, we have this area here we call the mix selection area. So this is a contextual area that's going to change depending on what it is, what mix you have selected. So when I'm on my main mix, I can see my main, my channel. I can copy a mix, and I can paste that into a couple of channels. If I'm on an effects, it's going to show me the mutes for my effects as well as the taps for my uh, delays. Now, you'll notice over here in my flex fader, when I chose the effects, it changed to my effects master. And I now have an effects edit button here. So I can choose effects edit. And now I can in my effects settings. 
I can choose a delay, nice big tap for my delay. If I'm on an AUGS mix, the button changes to a GEQ, and now I have my GEQ for the AUGS. Same for the main. And then when I go back to selecting the channel, it goes to my fat channel view. So every single one of the buttons for your mix shows you the meter for that mix. So again, all of the information that you need right on top. I have every single input meter and every single output meter all the time. On the far right are your main faders. I have my main left right and my mono. These never go away. Anywhere you're at in your mix, you always have access to your main faders. I have talkback, and I can select my talkback on the fly of which auxes I'm talking back to. So if I wanted to talk about how the drummer can't stay in time, I can make sure I'm not talking to him when I'm using my talkback. Another cool thing is the talkback button is what we call a dual mode button. So if I touch it and release it, it latches in the talkback mode. If I touch and hold, it's a momentary. When I release it, it turns off. All right, so up in my fat channel area, we saw that we have the fat channel, we have GEQ, and we also have our effects edits up here. This is also where I'm going to pull up my scenes and quick and mute groups. So I've got my mute groups, and I've got my quick scenes. And then I can also bring up all of my scenes by touching my presets button over here in the corner. So now I have a list of all of my scenes that I could bring up, all of my scene filters, so I can filter out what my scene is recalling right on the fly. Now, you have the same paradigm for the fat channel. I've got my fat channel presets. So I see all of my fat channel presets. Now we've got a new feature called audition mode. So if I put my presets into audition mode, I can now go through my settings, and it'll load it immediately. Well, it doesn't load it. It'll pull it up immediately so I can hear what's going on, scroll through a couple of presets, find something I think I was like or is pretty close, but maybe on this particular track, I don't need that much on my EQ boosted. So let's just pull that down a little bit. And now when I load that channel, it's going to load it with the change that I made to the preset. So that's a basic overview of the mixer. One of the first things that we, you do when you set up a mixer, though, is you set up your mix, right? So we try to make that really easy for you. And we've got a mix. Uh, channel uh, uh, setup area. So we've got this channel uh, options where you can choose your channel type. So let's see here. Let's go to channel one is my kick. Channel two is a snare. Those were already set up. Channel three is a rack tom. Channel four is a rack tom. Uh, I've got some overheads on my drums here and here. And you'll see as I'm doing this, it's populating an icon on my channel which may, gives me a quick visual reference of what that channel is. It's also naming the channel for me. So I'm seeing that it's a drum set. Uh, I'm seeing that it's a kick. I can also go in and I can rename that channel if I'd like. So if I don't want it to be named kick, I want it to be named something special, like maybe it's a double kick, and this is the jazz kick, right? So I can go through and I can customize that. And the cool thing is when you set up your channel types, it's not only naming your channel and assigning an icon to the channel, but it's also tagging that channel with information about what type of track it is. So when I choose a kick drum, it's going to tag that channel as a kick, and it's going to tag it as a drum. So now when I go into the presets, recall presets, it's going to filter out the guitar presets and the vocal presets so I can focus on only what is, is pertinent to that track. So everything on the surface is contextual based off of what I'm working on. Because it's software, I can pull things in and out based on that context. So this software, UC Surface, exact same software running on Windows touch screen computer, same as running on a Mac, same as running on an iPad. Exact same software on every platform. And this is how you're going to control everything on the mixer. So what this means is anytime we want to add a feature, make an update, tweak a workflow, we change the software. So the mixer is going to continue to evolve over time to be more and more powerful. 
So while this is super powerful, it is the first touchscreen digital mixer on the market. And it's the best touchscreen digital mixer that you are ever going to see because this is specifically designed for live mixing. It's not like other mixing software that you can get on the market today where it's an accessory app and you can access some features and some parameters. This was specifically designed to be battle ready in the heat of live mixing. Everything is there, no more than two touches away. Jump around, do your mix, and have a happy audience. <laughs> All right. Have questions? questions? Yeah. Uh, click on the, the little info, the little I. Okay, right there where it says pre. Yeah, uh, so that, that the, the label will be uh, more indica indicative of what it is. So this is, is our first uh, feature complete build. So, so there's some bugs that need to be sussed out. So what this is, is this is uh, setting the pre or post for the send on the digital card. So if you're recording oh, to capture, okay. or if I'm using that as an audio interface going into Studio One, that's gonna set my digital send to oh, be either so pre or the, post fat channel. Aha, so this is just like the, uh, on the. It's, just, it's the pre-post but di uh, digital button. Post digital, Yeah. Uh, got it. That's right. Link, links my channels. That's the stereo link. Yep. And then up here changes from my analog to digital source. How does the connectivity with the control devices work? Excellent. Uh, connectivity to the control devices. So all control is done via uh, the network. So you can either do a wired Ethernet connection or you can do a wireless connection. So if you plug into the back uh, control port on the back of the mixer, you can plug that into your, your switch. Uh, if your switch is a wireless uh, switch or has a wireless access point, you can then connect your iPad or your computer wirelessly to it. It also ships with a USB Wi-Fi dongle. So you can put that in the f USB jack on the front of the mixer. And then when you power on your mixer, it'll connect to the, your wireless network. So you don't have to have the, the cable plugged in the back. So the way I have it set up right now is I have uh, an Ethernet cable going into a wireless switch, and then my touchscreen is going wirelessly. Uh, so this, this actually is a complete touchscreen computer. This is all all in one computer. Um, and I can pick it up and carry it around with me. So if I was really buff and strong like Justin, maybe I'd stand in front of house with this thing. <laughs> can you show us what the uh, connection menu looks like, or the setup menu? Uh, I can. So there, there's really no connection menu. When you go into your setup screen, I have my devices that will show up in my device permission area, my firmware, all of my basic system uh, uh, options. Um, I don't have a Wi-Fi dongle in this one, but if I were to touch Wi-Fi setup, it would come up with the list of all of your uh, Wi-Fi, available Wi-Fi networks. You just touch it and you're in. If there's a password, you're in the password, that's it. So there's no configuring of IP addresses. There's no uh, uh, going through and wrangling anything. If you power on the mixer with the USB, the included USB Wi-Fi dongle, then you can go into that Wi-Fi setup and you can choose whatever network to connect to you want. How about, uh, does uh, QMix work with this? Absolutely it does. So QMix, our software uh, for monitor, uh, managing your monitor mixes on an iPhone or an iPod Touch, definitely works with this. We have 16 mix buses. You have 16 different uh, iPhones or iPads connected on the network. And using the permissions here, you can assign each one to a specific aux send so you don't have the drummer screwing up the lead singer's mix. So, so you can actually have multiple iPads that are also, like, I could use my iPad and you could give me permission to only aux three yeah, or something like that. Absolutely. Well. And it's the same with the Surface software. So with Surface, if somebody else connects with the Surface software, I can choose to only give them permissions to an aux send. So somebody can, if, if somebody prefers running on a big screen for their monitor mix instead of the little phone, we can do it that way. The other cool thing is if you're running on, say, an iPad, I can have the iPad sitting here next to me, right? And I can have the iPad on, say, my scenes view. 
and my mute groups. So my scenes and my mute groups are always right here, and my mix is right here. And then what if I need to step away from my touchscreen computer, I just pick up my iPad, and I go off, tune in the room, so make sure the guys back there in the corner can hear okay, come back, go back into my scenes, and I'm continuing to mix right where I left off. Ray, could you describe uh, what the different types of customers would be between this and a traditional Studio Live mixer? Like what, what type of use case or customer would choose this over an existing Studio uh, Live yeah. mixer? So one of the most, uh, uh, one of the biggest advantages to a system like this that you're going to have over a traditional mixing console is its portability. So a band who is on the go, whether that's traveling across the country or around the world doing gigs, maybe they have their, want to have their own mixer just for their own in-ear monitoring system, no matter where they go. Maybe they're a, a local touring band, and they just they, all of their synths and drums take up too much space in the van. Uh, so it's a compact, super portable system. In fact, we've been going around doing demos just taking the rack mixer and a touchscreen computer and carrying it on the plane. So you've got a 32-channel mixer as a carry-on on an airplane. So that's, that's one big advantage that it has. Um, otherwise, you know, there, there are definitely uh, uh, folks who are more comfortable with physical controls. And our Studio Live AI mixers are perfect for that person because they not only have all the physical controls, but all the physical controls are right there. You don't have to jump around through layers and menus and things like that. You see everything right there. So there, there's the, the more traditional workflow. But then for somebody who, say, you know, grew up with iPads, you know, they're f really comfortable with touchscreens. And so for somebody who's comfortable with the touchscreens, it's perfect for them. Uh, another one is maybe you're a gigging band and you're doing um, a lot of weddings or, or uh, events like that. And there isn't room always to set up a mixer at a front of house position. Well, oftentimes you'll end up with the mixer set up over on the side of the stage. And with our Studio Live AI series with SL Remote, you have the advantage of going out and with the iPad. Well, this, you get that same experience, except instead of bringing a large 32-channel mixer with you, it's now just in your rack. So there's definitely uh, some, some specific customers that this address. There is some overlap of customers for sure. Uh, but it, it really is going to come down to, are you comfortable with physical controls or with virtual software controls? Ray, can you comment on expandability? Yes, expandability is awesome. Because with a rack mixer like this, it's a black box with an option card in it. So your options are almost limitless. So when we ship, it comes with a FireWire card in it. Now, quick tidbit, you don't need to share this part. The FireWire card that comes in the rack mixers is actually an AVB network card. AVB just isn't turned on yet. So we're still working on making sure that our AVB networking is solid and tight and reliable before we give it to customers. But that card is capable of it. So when we do have AVB locked down and solid and reliable, firmware update turns it on, and all of your rack mixers work on the network. Now, we also, at the end of the year, are going to have the Dante card available for this. The Dante card is going to give you two Dante ports as well as your FireWire ports. So with that, a Dante card and a rack mixer and a Dante card and a uh, Studio Live 3242 AI, your rack mixer is now your stage box. But it's not just a stage box, because it's a full mixer inside. So it's a monitor mixer and a stage box. So now you can have not just an AUGS mix for the, the guys on stage. You also have a full mixer. So you have fat channels for everybody on stage. You have their own effects for everybody on stage. Mm -hmm. So you have a professional, large touring experience of having a separate mixer for what's on stage versus what's at front of house. Everybody on stage can control the rack mixer mixes with their QMix app on their phones, and then front of house can be running on a 3242 mixer, all accessing the, the remote XMAX preamps in the stage box over a Dante network. So, so, so basically the experience is, okay, I have a 32-channel AI mixer. Uh, once the Dante card is available, um, 
I get one of these with the Dante card, and not only do I get a stage box, but I get a separate monitor mixer, and I add recallable mic pre's to my current That's mixer. Right. Wa bam! Yes, <laughs> okay. there it is. Uh, another, another, uh, another question. So you know, this software is really cool, and and I think the first thing that uh, a Studio Live current AI guy is going to say is, "Dang, man, I wish I had that." <laughs> You're right, because it is really cool, right? Um, I mean, you can run everything on the mixer from the iPad. So, you know, with uh, Studio Live Remote AI today, you have a lot of capabilities, but you can't reach everything. So sometimes there's some things you want to get to that you can't. Well, this software is going to be available for the Studio Live AI mixers, the current Studio Live AI mixers. So at, at launch, it's not going to work because we're, we're focusing on making sure it's rock solid with our rack mixers. Make sure that we've got that great experience locked in and, and working well. And then the next thing we're doing is we're up, we're rolling in the 1642 AI, the 2442 AI, and the 3242 AI into this software. So you're going to have the Surface software for all of your AI mixers from Personas. Uh, another quick note on the expandability. Um, these mixers are also going to get the cascading functionality of the current Studio Live AI mixers. Now, it's it, we need to do it. We want uh, we're waiting to do it until we do an update to the software because we want to provide an experience with the software where when I cascade them, I, they're not two separate mixers, but it shows up as one giant 64-channel mixer. So that's going to be coming soon. So that means you can have a 64-channel mixer. You can have 64-channel mixer on the stage with two 3242s cascaded at front of house, even. So, so you, 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 when you talk about expandability and scalability, no mixer offers that, all right? There is, there's nobody but Personas that offers true scalability, where you can invest in a 16 input mixer through Firewire, the network, get an extra 16 channels in later on down the line, add another mixer, get up to 64 channels, maybe someday again, add another network mixer. So scalability and expandability is, is at the heart of the design of the RM series mixers. Say, Ray, how much does the software cost in addition to the hardware? The software, you know, we're going to give you a bro deal. Software's free. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> So, of course, you know, we're not just going to sell you a mixer and then make you pay for software, too, because there's no way of controlling it. So you get the software for free. And the advantage of the software being completely platform agnostic is it's up to you how you want to interact with the mixer. So, for example, the, uh, uh, wi this Windows 8 computer that I've been uh, showing today uh, is a really nice 27-inch all-in-one Windows 8 touchscreen computer. Now, this particular computer is about 1500 bucks. All right. There's another one that we've been using that's a little bit smaller. It's a 22-inch that we were able to pick up for about $800. You can get an iPad, you know, 500 bucks. You know, so you have the cost of whatever computer you want to run it on. And if, if you don't want the touch, you can run it on a, on a Mac or a PC without touch. And you can use a mouse and a keyboard to control everything on here as well. So if you already have a computer sitting around, maybe you've got you know, one of the, the cool Personas rack mount computers. Well, then you just need to go out and, you know, for about two, three hundred dollars, you can add a touch screen to that computer. And you can do it all in there. And all the software is free. Hey, Ray. How are you? I'm doing fine. You how are you? Buddy. Yeah. Um, tell me, what is the street cost for the RM16, RM32? Um, not enough. <laughs> no joke, bro. So. The RM32, 32 recallable X-Max preamps, 16 AUGS mix outputs, main left, right, and mono center output, $2,000. $19.99 street price US. RM16, also a 32 channel 25 bus mixer with 16 recallable X-Max preamps, eight local mix outputs, and your main left, right, and center mono output, $13.99. U.S. street price. So that means you add the cost of a computer to that, you get a budget computer, 
five, eight hundred dollars, you're at let's say twenty five hundred bucks if you can if, for a five hundred dollar computer for a thirty two channel mixer. With cascading, you're at five thousand dollars for a sixty four channel digital mixer. Hey Ray, um, who else in the market offers a sixty four channel mixer for five thousand um, dollars? You know, there's Nobody. <laughs> Only Personas has a 64-channel mixer under $10,000. So we said, let's make a 64-channel mixer for under $5,000. <laughs> so for, for $2,000 each, for the RM32s, cascade them over Firewire, you have a 64-channel mixer, add the cost of whatever computer or control device you want, 64-channel mixer, under $5,000. Now you can say, well, bam. Wow. Any other questions? <laughs> Any other questions? You have another question? So, Ray, I, I understand that um, there's another company that had a 32-channel mixer, and uh, I'm just curious what the benefits this mixer would have over that other 32-channel uh, rack mixer. Um. Yeah, there's 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 a couple of, of other rack mixers out there. Um, there's some uh, that are very expensive, where for 16 channels or so you're going to be paying like around eight to ten thousand dollars, and there's some that you can get a 32 channel rack mixer for a lot less than that. Uh, however, uh, those that rack those rack mixers don't have the full 32 recallable mic preamps on them. They don't have the same option cards for AVB and Dante. And the most important thing is they don't have Surface. They don't have the UC Surface control software. So uh, the software designed specifically as the sole control in a live mixing environment. So we put excruciating detail into how every single parameter of this entire piece of software is placed to make it intuitive and quick and reliable in a live mixing situation. You're not gonna get that with any other rack mixer on the market. You're not gonna be able to see every single input at the same time, every single output at the same time. You're not gonna be able to get to everything you need to in the heat of a live mix. And you're not gonna get Windows touch, touch screen compatibility for multi-touch and desktop and iPad all with the same software. So the software is what really sets us apart. The hardware is fantastic. It's Personas, highly reliable, sounds incredible, great converters, XMAX preamps, but the software is where you're gonna live day in and day out as a mix engineer. And that's where we put the effort into an experience that is unmatched by anybody else in the market. Robert, did I see you raising your hand for a question? Did you look at the number of downloads per... Uh, well, we're going to make you repeat it on the mic. Are you limited on the number of downloads of the software for each mix rack? Like if you get one mix rack, you get one download? Or how Absolutely you not. Cool. No. The software is completely free, completely open. Um, we'll also be making it available as a demo mode. So even if you don't own the, soft, the rack mixer, you can download the software. We want people to be able to, to check it out and feel comfortable with it. Because um, like I said, the best part about this is the software. So we, we want people to get it in their hands because we know once you've got this software up and you experience it for yourself, you're going to buy the mixer. Mm -hmm.